Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, an architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at application gateways on Microsoft Azure and how you can use these to create highly available applications that use the HTTP or HTTPS protocol. Last time we looked at load balancers, and today we're going to be looking at application gateways, and they fulfill a very similar role, but that's specific to HTTP and HTTPS traffic. So we're going to start off with the same basic units, the internet and an Azure VNet, and then we're going to have that VNet carved up into two subnets, a front-end and a back-end subnet. Now the front-end subnet, as we would expect, is going to be handling our web servers, and our web servers are configured to connect both to the front-end and the back-end subnet, so they each have two network interfaces. And as we saw in our last demo with the load balancer they were configured as a highly available set so in the event that one server goes down the other server can pick up the load and vice versa the only way that we get a total failure is in the event that the entire set fails now in load balancers we simply put a load balancer in front of this and it routed traffic based on the port number to one of these servers. But with an application gateway, we can do the exact same thing. The biggest difference though with an application gateway is it's, it's specifically designed for web, web server traffic. So it's a layer seven device that's written for the HTTP or HTTPS protocol. So in addition to things like load balancing, it can do things like URL based routing, or it can do uh, things like web application firewalls, and it can do things like SSL offloading and, and uh, things that are specific to those protocols. So given the nature of the application gateway, it's really going to be only usable whenever you have web servers behind it, unlike a load balancer, which will work for any layer four uh, type traffic, that'd be TCP or UDP. And so it can work for HTTP, but it, because HTTP is layer seven uh, and it's built on top of TCP. However, it doesn't have the extra features that we just mentioned, like web application firewalls, SSL offloading and URL based routing. But for our backend subnet, since we have a database and the backend, we have a database cluster, we still need it to have a load balancer in front of it because it's using a TCP based protocol that's proprietary to that database technology, which in the demo that we saw yesterday with uh, uh, the Apache configured uh, HA web servers and the backend databases being MariaDB was Galera. So in this case, we're going to basically be demoing the same thing on the front end, uh, except we're going to be swapping out that load balancer for an application gateway and then keeping our uh, load balancer in the backend for our database cluster. I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm looking at my resource group I called HA WordPress. And this is where I've configured all the resources for my highly available WordPress setup here. Now let's scroll down and review the VMs in this. I have two front end VMs that are running Apache and these are configured in an HA configuration and, a, and WordPress is sharing a common content pool that's being served up by an Azure file share. And then I've configured WordPress to be highly available so that it doesn't really matter which server receives the request, it will appropriately handle the request. And uh, the in the event that one of those goes down, I can uh, continue to operate my WordPress website here. Um, and these are my three database backends, DB1, 2, and 3, and these are running MariaDB with Galera uh, installed to give a cluster out of these. And uh, when writes happen to one, it makes those writes happen on all these other nodes so that they are consistent with one another. And any one of these databases can handle both reads and writes. So it's a uh, kind of a, oh, it doesn't really matter which back end database gets the request, it will appropriately handle it. Now, I still have in this resource group, both of my load balancers configured. Uh, this is the database load balancer um, and the web that load balancer is the one that originally configured for the web application I was exposing, but I added an application resource group application gateway to handle the, basically the same thing. But to quickly review the load balancer, uh, that's uh, it's that we have in this load balancer front end IP configurations, uh, back end pools and health probes. And then those all come together as part of a load balancing rule. And um, this is what allows me to expose my, uh, load my database as a single IP, although I have three nodes behind it. 
Now, a application gateway is very similar to this load balancer, but it does things slightly different in that it is a um, layer three, a layer seven device, not a layer four device. And so with an application gateway, uh, I have to configure uh, front end IP configurations like I would in a load balancer. In this case, I have a application gateway front end IP address as 52 dot. And uh, then I have also the need to configure backend pools. And in this case, I have a backend pool that consists of both my web uh, virtual machines that I have as part of this uh, configuration. Now, like the uh, load balancer, I have to take these resources, these backend pools, and these um, front end IP configurations and uh, expose those as part of rules. Something else that comes along with this is something called listeners. And listeners are basically how you expose ports on your front end. Uh, so you can have multiple listeners on a single front end IP address. So the, the front end IP address needs a, a listener uh, as part of it. And uh, then that listener gets exposed as part of that set as well. So for an application gateway, basically to create a rule, you need a back end pool, a front end IP address uh, configuration, a listener, and then you bring those together as part of a rule. Um, and the, the rule is, look, is going to look something like this. And uh, I have the listener, which is tied to my front end IP address, that back end pool, which I've already configured, and then these HTTP gateway uh, settings here. And this is where you can do things like um, turn on uh, cookie based affinity connection draining. So that's the, uh, the idea where uh, if you shut down the uh, connect, if you pull the plug on one of these uh, nodes on whatever this is load balancing, it will uh, maintain those connection, but not allow any new connections to come in and before it actually removes that. And then once it's done, it will then uh, shut down that connection uh, rather than just do a uh, cold cut off of anything that's in in flight. Uh, and then you can configure the protocol and then obviously the port numbers uh, and pass. Now, notice here that it has the ability to have custom probes as a part of this. And if you need to have a custom probe for this specific uh, front end, you can do that. But this is a some this is where application gateways differ slightly from load balancers in that it all application gateways will have what is essentially a default uh, health probe. Now, the default health probe is I, I called web probe here, and it is a default web probe that is not that it's not assigned to anything. So it's essentially a default one that is going to monitor um, the back end, and it's not connected to any particular uh, listener. It's it's not connected to anything that's uh, any particular rule. It's just monitoring everything. And now you can cast you can create custom back end. Uh, probes if you want to for specific HTTP configurations as we just saw but in this case I'm having a, I have a default one since this is the only thing that's a part of this application gateway and and this one I have a probe that is that is probing port uh, HTTP port 80 really on the front end using that protocol and it's expecting uh, a path so I'm saying path slash uh, that's just going to request the root and uh, does it on a 30 second interval with 30 second timeout and unhealthy threshold of three so it basically if it gets three uh, requests that are unhealthy, then it's going to mark a node as unhealthy. And uh, you can also use use probe mashing conditions, basically HTTP response codes. Uh, you can limit these or you can expand these rather widely. I'm expecting anything in the 200 to 399 range. So, so that's basically anything that gets an OK, 201, 200, or 202 status, if you will, and then a, or a redirect, which should be a 301, 302, or something in that range. Anything that's in the 400 range is usually not found on authorized those kind of standard HTTP uh, errors and anything that's 500 is usually something programmatically or misconfigured uh, incorrectly about the web server itself it's internal to the web server and it also allows you to do uh, response body matches so that you can look for content that matches specific rules uh, inside of the response body that comes back from the health probe so with these probes, you have a little bit more configurability than what you might expect from the probes that we saw on the actual uh, load balancer, but I'm only using a very basic one. I'm expecting it just to return a status code of that's appropriate against the, the root here uh, for my uh, WordPress site. 
which should be uh, fine for what I'm doing here because on WordPress, that's usually going to go to a cache where it's actually going to go back into the database and pull the content uh, for the for the the index page. So um, that's going to do basically an end to end test for me uh, every time I go out there and do this probe on what on all the web servers that are part of my pool. So that's a good. I don't really need to have any customizations beyond this for this particular probe. Now with a pro with a uh, application gateway, there's some other things that I don't have turned on, but if I wanted to, I could turn on application gateways, uh, web application firewalls with this. And uh, with this, I, I, it's a WAF uh, V2 uh, and a WAF uh, rules are basically um, rules that uh, you can configure uh, for uh, specific types of attacks against your website. So SQL uh, injection uh, would be one of those kinds of types uh, uh, attacks or cross site scripting. Uh, and there's a number of other kinds of, of rules that uh, can be a part of a web application firewall. So the web application firewall has protection that's more than just a basic TCP uh, IP um, filtering that you can do with a kind of more low level firewall. Uh, but this one is specifically tuned for HTTP uh, traffic. So you can look for patterns in the traffic as these uh, requests come in and then block it based on the patterns and the protocol uh, with a web application firewall. Now I'm not going to turn that on, but I'm gonna leave, I just want to make you aware of that. And there's a couple other things that you can do with uh, this as well. You can do rewrites. Um, as well, you can do URL rewrites, uh, and with this, you can uh, massage the incoming request somewhat to uh, allow you to uh, m maybe change some of the headers or do uh, different things like that with the rewrites, so that you can more customize the incoming requests for the backend server if you need to do those kinds of things with this web application firewall. And then also this thing gives you a little bit more uh, insight into the telemetry uh, as well. So like back in health is a nice um, a little monitoring tool here inside the portal and it will show you the status of all your back end uh, probes. It takes it a little while to pull up. So it's going to be looking at my back end probe and uh, from the looks of it, my back end probes are both in a healthy state. So that means my probes are, are, are successfully returning um, 200 uh, level of uh, responses from my back end. So this is a web application fire, uh, web application um, gateway uh, overview here. And uh, with that, I can show you that this is actually working and I'm not just doing a bunch of smoke and mirrors here. Uh, I'm going to copy out this uh, various um, IP address here and paste it into my browser. And then if I go to HTTP, since I'm not using HTTPS, I can pull up my WordPress site using this application gateway. And uh, this is flowing through my application gateway uh, that rather than my load balancer that I actually still have available on this. So I'm actually using both in, in parallel, but this is serving up the same website, but it's, this time it's being uh, served up from my application gateway versus my load balancer. So with the load balancer or the application gateway, you get similar results results with HTTP, but one of them, as I said, is more specific for TCP and UDP traffic, and this one is specific for HTTP traffic. So choosing the right technology for what you need is, is going to be of the essence, but you don't have to use the application gateway. I it, you can use a load balancer for HTTP as well. So this is going to wrap up our demo for today. Uh, thanks for watching this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.